In this video, we'll look at how to design a breakout board from scratch in KiCad for a differential pressure sensor combined with an STM32 microcontroller. We can use a differential pressure sensor on a drone, for example, to measure airspeed, which in turn can be used for a closed loop airspeed control system. The differential pressure sensor measures static and dynamic pressure via a pitot-static tube, and from the difference of these pressures, we can estimate the aircraft's airspeed. I'll leave a link in the description for further information on how this works, and we'll also make a follow-up video for the software part of this board. Thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. I had these breakout boards manufactured and assembled by them. You can go to github.com slash PMS67 and look up the Airspeed Sensor Board repository to find all design files, manufacturing files, and assembly files so you can order these boards from JLC PCB yourself. Alternatively, I've recently launched a new Phil's Lab website at philz-lab.net, which includes a web shop where you can get fully assembled and tested boards shipped straight to you. The links for this are in the description box below. As usual, another thank you to Altium for sponsoring this video. In my previous video, I showed how to use Altium Designer to design a similar breakout board for an inertial measurement unit. If you visit altium.com slash yt slash phil's lab, you can check out Altium Designer for yourself using their free trial. I'll be featuring more of Altium Designer in upcoming videos on FPGA design, so stay tuned. But for now, let's get started with the KiCad and this breakout board. The main parts that I'm using for this design are found in the JLC PCB parts library. Firstly, the differential pressure sensor is through-hole and actually not that inexpensive. We'll need the datasheet for the footprint information, also at the programming stage, in a later video. Then we also have the STM32 microcontroller, which is this very simple STM32 F030. And this is very inexpensive, but sufficient for this design. And it serves a couple of purposes. One is to read the differential pressure sensor data by I squared C, then to filter that raw sensor data and convert it to an airspeed in meters per second squared measurement. And lastly, to provide the filter data to a master via SPI, including a data ready interrupt pin. So let's move over to KiCad and look at the schematic. Here I am in KiCad looking at the finished schematic for this board. There are roughly three sections. First of all, the power supply over here, the microcontroller and sensor over here, as well as the I.O. connector. Let's go through them one by one. The power supply is fed by a plus five volt source provided to the board, passes through a Schottky diode for reverse polarity protection, and goes into a low dropout or LDO regulator. This steps the input voltage down to 3.3 volts, which is used by the STM32 and the sensor. Since this is a fairly low power design, an LDO is more than sufficient and a diode good enough for protection. The LDO requires an input as well as an output capacitor for stability of at least one microfarad, which is stated in the datasheet, but I've opted for larger 10 microfarad capacitors here just in case. There's also a green LED on this board to indicate that we are powered on, as well as this current limiting resistor. Next, we have the core of this board, which is the differential pressure sensor and the STM32 microcontroller. I won't be going through it in this video, but I've used the datasheet of the sensor to create the symbol and the footprint, which you'll see later in the PCB design stage. Now, the sensor requires pull ups on the I squared C bus, and I typically go for 2.2 kilo ohm resistors for 3.3 volts. It also requires decoupling capacitors. I've opted to go for 100 nanofarad close to the device and a bulk decoupling capacitor of 10 microfarads. The data lines and the clock lines of the I2C bus are then hooked up directly to the STM32 microcontroller. The microcontroller itself also requires decoupling capacitors, and that's usually 100 nanofarads per VDD or per VDDA pin. Then there's the serial wire debug connections over here, PA13, PA14. The serial wire debug interface is for programming and debugging of this microcontroller. It contains the I.O. pin as well as the clock pin. I've routed these connections as well as the reset pin connection to a solderless header over here, which I'll show you more about when we get to the actual PCB. I also typically like to place a 100 nanofarad capacitor on the end reset line to avoid spurious resets. Then there's the crystal with suitable load capacitors, 10 picofarads in this case for this specific crystal, and a feed resistor over here to avoid overdriving the crystal. To get the right pin locations, for example, for the SPI, I squared C and so forth, I've used STM32 cube IDE and set up my peripherals there. You can see this in my other videos on STM32 microcontrollers. Thirdly, 
we have the IO header, which serves as the SPI connection to the host, including an interrupt pin, 5 volt power input, 3.3 volt power output, and sufficient ground returns for this application. I've added some basic filtering and ESD protection, as well as some series current limiting resistors to protect this breakout board. Lastly, I've added four mounting holes to the schematic, and that's pretty much it. So let's move over to the PCB design now. This is a very simple two-layer PCB. The top layer is for signals in red, and the bottom layer is predominantly for ground copper pour. This way our routing stays at the top, and any time we require connection to ground, for example here, we simply use a Y trace and a via to tie to the bottom ground plane. This board is fairly compact at about 32 millimeters by 47 millimeters. Unfortunately, the differential pressure sensor over here is quite bulky and thus increases the length of the PCB by quite a bit. The four mounting holes have been placed one in each corner and the corners have been rounded. After doing a rough placement of the connector, the sensor and the STM32 microcontroller, I place smaller parts such as capacitors, resistors and so forth. Important circuitry such as decoupling capacitors, crystals, and so forth were laid out and routed first. So route your critical connections first and lay them out first. Always try to keep decoupling capacitors as close as possible to the relevant IC pins, such as here, with short and wide traces between them. We can see the same thing for the low dropout regulator over here, with the input and output bypass or decoupling capacitors, really close to the actual device. The crystal circuitry is over here, and I've tried to keep the crystal very close to the STM32 with the load capacitors close to the crystal. The signal traces for the entire PCB were kept as short as possible with minimal amounts of vias. You can see the zero y debug solderless header over here, which is used in conjunction with an ST-Link debugger and a Tag Connect probe. This means you don't need to solder on any connectors for debugging, and thus it saves space and cost for each board. The ESD protection is placed right next to the header over here, then the series current limiting resistors before the relevant traces make their way further through the board. If I need to use a via, for example here, I make sure the trace on the bottom layer is as short as possible to avoid cutting the ground plane up too much. Alternatively, you could also use a larger footprint zero ohm resistor as a jumper, but for simplicity, I did not use them in this design. Lastly, I place things such as silkscreen, the logo, pin descriptions of this header, and used the KiCad 3D viewer to check the placements and made sure the components didn't interfere. For example, I have decoupling capacitors underneath this sensor and there's actually enough space to put them there. So you can see that there. I actually got the step file for the differential pressure sensor from 3dcontentcentral.com and that's typically where I get my 3D models from. Then all that was left to do was to export the production data that includes going to plot and then plotting the Gerber files, as well as fabrication outputs, such as the footprint position file, as well as bill of materials, which you can do in the KiCad schematic editor. Full details on this process and how to order via glcpcb.com can be found in many of my other videos, and I'll leave a link to those in the description below. So thank you very much for watching this very quick rundown of how to create your own breakout board in KiCad. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.